Fundamental problem F3-8 from the R.C. Hibbler Engineering Mechanics Statics book says, Determine the tension developed in cables AB, AC, and AD. And so notice that in the diagram we have four distinct points, A, B, C, and D. And now, of course, before beginning the problem, we must be familiar with tension, which basically implies a force that points outwards from a source, where in this case that respective source is point A. And so knowing this, let's go ahead and start this problem as usual by sketching out a free body diagram of the system. So starting off here with point A, here we can go ahead and draw the tensile force AB, which of course is going to point outwards along the x direction, just like so. And then the force AC, which is along the xy plane. And finally, the force AD, which is along the yz plane. And of course, we have our coordinate system, xyz. And next, notice that we have two slope triangles, one for cable AC and the other for cable AD. So we can go ahead and add these slope triangles onto the free body diagram to, of course, define the senses of direction for these two forces. And lastly, we have the external 900 Newton force, which points downwards. So now that we have our free body diagram, we are now ready to perform our equilibrium, which of course means setting the sum of forces equal to zero. So here, let's go ahead and start with the sum of forces along the x direction where we can set the direction that points towards us as the positive x direction. And now looking at the free body diagram, we can see that force AB acts along this x direction, since cable AB, of course, is shown along the x direction. So force AB is directly along the x direction. And of course, it points towards our positive x direction. So this is simply positive FAB. Next, also notice that cable AC has a component that is also along the x-axis provided by the slope triangle. And from our free body diagram, the force along AC points away from us, which is of course negative. So in our equation, this will be minus FAC times the proportion of the slope triangle which is the three that's along the x-axis over the hypotenuse, five. And so that is the x component of FAC, given the slope triangle. And these are the only forces that act along the x direction. So this completes our equation for the sum of forces along the x direction. But of course, notice that in this equation, we have two unknowns. So we're unable to directly solve this equation just yet. So in that case, we need to find another equation, which moving on, we can do the sum of forces along the y axis, where I'll go ahead and consider our positive direction to the right. And I'll just go ahead and quickly show all the positive directions, which I'll be considering based on the coordinate system. And now taking a look at this x, y plane here, we notice that Cable AC has a component along the y-axis, so hence we have the y-component of force AC, which is FAC times 4 over 5. And of course, this points in the positive y-direction. Next, looking around, we see that cable AD also has a component along the y-axis. And of course, on our free body diagram, force AD points in the negative y-direction. So this will be minus the y component of force AD, which is FAD times 3 over 5. And so this sums up all the forces along the y direction. And so this becomes our second equation. But of course, notice that we now have three unknowns and only two equations. So we must find our third equation, which of course will come from our summation of forces along the z direction, where up is positive. So right off the bat, we see that we have the 900 Newton force, 
that points directly downwards, which is of course in the negative direction. So we have negative 900 newtons. And next we see that force AD has a component along the Z direction. And of course it points towards the positive Z direction. So this will be plus the Z component of force AD, which is FAD times four over five. And so these are the only two forces that act along the Z direction, where of course here we had two planes, the ZY plane and the XY plane. And so this completes our summation of forces along the Z direction. So this becomes our third equation. And since the number of unknowns are still three, and we now have three equations, we are now ready to solve for the unknowns. So of course, thanks to the known 900 Newton force, we can directly solve equation three for force AD. So isolating FAD, we add 900 to the other side of the equation, and of course multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. So we end up with FAD equals 900 times five over four. And so just putting this in a calculator, we will get 1,125 newtons. So hence, the tension in cable AD, FAD is equal to 1,125 newtons. So we have found tension in cable AD. And also notice that since we are in the thousands, you can also write the 1,125 newtons as 1.125 kilonewtons, which is of course equivalent. And now we just need to find the tensions in cables AB and AC. So looking at our set of equations, notice that we can go ahead and plug in the value of FAD into equation two to solve for FAC. So substituting equation three into equation two, we have FAC times four over five minus the value of FAD, which is 1,125 newtons times the three over five. Here, we just simply solve for FAC. Oh, and of course, this is equal to zero. And so here we move this green portion to the right. And simplifying this, we get 675 newtons. And now moving the four fifths to the other side, we get FAC equals 675 newtons times five over four, which is equal to 843.75 newtons. Hence, the tension in cable AC, FAC, is equal to 843.75 newtons. So we have now found the tension in cable AC, and we just need to find tension in cable AB. So looking at our equations here, of course, we'll use equation one to find FAB, where we'll simply substitute the value of FAC to find FAB. So subbing equation two in equation one, we'll have FAB minus FAC 843.75 newtons times the three fifths. And this is equal to zero. So now we isolate FAB. So we will have FAB, which will be equal to the portion in blue added to the right side. So simplifying this portion, this is equal to 506.25 newtons. And so adding this on both sides, we end up with FAB equals 506.25 newtons. So that is the tension in cable AB, which now completes this problem as we have now found the tensions in all cables. And now notice that each of these forces are all positive, which basically implies that these are tensile forces, which is of course what we expect. And so remember that positive forces basically mean forces in tension, which again point outwards from a source. 
and negative forces represent forces in compression.